Okay, now let's go back to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. All right, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So John now is turning behind to see the voice that's speaking with him. Who's this voice? And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Ah, okay then. So he sees seven golden candlesticks over here. As much as I want to use different colors over here, people can only see like three groups of colors here, so I can't do that. As he looks, as he looks behind him, as he sees the seven golden candlesticks, so this is going to be crude. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So something like this. Yes, all right. So as he looks behind him and looks at the seven golden candlesticks, what does he see? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So notice in the middle of the seven golden candlesticks, he sees one like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ right here, see? So he sees Jesus Christ in the midst over here. Now, the thing is this, is that when he looks behind him and sees Jesus Christ, notice that title, Son of Man, right? All right, so here's something that you can do, is that if you want to witness to an Old Testament Jew today, and he refuses to believe the New Testament, you can still refer to Jesus Christ here, because of the title, Son of Man. Look at the book of Daniel, for example. If you look at the book of Daniel... There is no doubt there is a title concerning about the Son of Man. It's all over. It's all over the book of Daniel, that title, Son of Man. So notice that their Old Testament will mention about Jesus Christ over there. So, use, so remember that phrase. That will be very helpful if you're trying to witness to a Jew. Find anything that says Son of Man, and then you'll see a lot of the references can refer to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 1 again. Uh, notice the second part of verse 13. So Jesus is there, clothed with a garment down to the foot. And so notice that he's wearing a garment that's all the way down to the feet right here. So this is kind of inaccurate over here. Let me erase this part. So it's all the way down to the foot, a garment. Now let's keep reading. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So notice right here, he uh, girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now the thing is this, is that when he's, uh, he's girding about himself, so it's kind of like a, a belt buckle, so to speak, but the, the paps, that's where you get the interesting phrase from Papa. Because that's where birth comes from, see? That's where birth comes from. But that's where you get the idea why the Pope wants to be called Papa, see? Because he's Holy Father. That's why he wants this. But this one you'll notice that Jesus Christ hey, is the one who gets that title. Of, it's not the Pope. So no, we don't believe in any Pope. <clears throat> With a golden girdle. So it's a golden girdle that's uh, around his paps. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So notice right here that his head and his hairs is really is white like wool. Mina, as it says, as white as snow. So it's really white. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So his eyes are literally like a flame of fire. Now notice right here, this is totally different from those pretty little... Uh, paintings where Jesus looks like an effeminate sissy yeah, and then he's got long pretty hair you know and then waving like this you know and it looks so pretty on Catholic portraits but that's not your Jesus right here you know that this is one scary Jesus right here he's gonna come down like this and people you know what they're gonna be looking for they're gonna be looking for a pretty looking Jesus an effeminate Jesus like the Antichrist who is a homosexual when he comes down, they're all going to mistake him as, this is Jesus. And when Jesus comes down in fire and vengeance like this, the people are, are going to go, that can't be Jesus. 
I mean, Ellen DeGeneres mentioned about, you know, Jesus would never talk like this concerning lesbians and homosexuals, so that can't be Jesus. How dare Jesus would, and Jesus cuts all their heads off, and he comes down out of Armageddon. He don't care. That's the book right there. That's Jesus Christ. So a lot of people only look, look at the loving side of Jesus, but they don't look at the holiness of Jesus Christ. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 15. And his feet <clears throat> like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So notice that he's really shining right over here because his feet is like unto fine brass over here. This is where I'll do red, okay? Now, the funny thing is this. There's a heretical group over there called Black Hebrew Movement, and these Black Hebrew weirdos, they're going to use verse 14 and 15 to prove that Jesus was black. So they honestly believe Jesus is a black man. How do you get that, Pastor? I didn't get that. You're right, okay? So you wouldn't get that unless you're like deliberately reading the verse to try to find something that matches your agenda. So this is proof that these people, when they read verse 14 and 15, they came up with that interpretation with an agenda. But normally a reader wouldn't see that without an agenda. Okay, the reason why is because verse 14, his hair is white, so that shows that he must have dark skin. And then verse 15, that's the point. Burned in a furnace like fine brass, so it shows that he's dark. Now, the thing is, is that this lacks common sense. If you ever seen, like, brass burning in a, a furnace, it's like the total opposite. It's not dark, it's brighter. It's brighter. Now, I'll tell, uh, if they really want to go by that interpretation, that burn in a furnace means black, then they got a problem. They, they just admitted they're from ham seed. You know why? Ham, his name means black, burnt. That's what it means. It means burnt. So if they want to go by their interpretation, you tell them this. It says right here, burn, right? You agree that means dark? Yeah, it means dark. Well, then that means you come from ham seed. No, it doesn't. And then you just quote to them this. Line upon line, <laughs> precept upon precept. It says burn, burn, line upon line. Now, some of these people are laughing because the black Hebrew movement, that's their favorite catchphrase. They always say line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept. So I would like, please do me a favor. If you're going to talk to one black Hebrew Israelite, you do the same thing with them and see how they get annoyed by that. All right? All righty. <clears throat> Let's return to our main text over here. Now that we established the Flat, the fact that Jesus is not black. Now let's go to this last part of verse 15. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So this is some kind of God. His voice sounds like many waves crashing. This is his holiness and the majestic God that we're seeing right here. Verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars. So he got seven stars on his right hand. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. So in his right hand, he has seven stars, and outside of his mouth goes this sword. And it's two-edged. And you got to understand that's the word of God right there. Because the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it mentions that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. If you compare this same verse with Revelation 19, the Bible says he comes down, and then he comes down... Uh, I think it mentions the sword out of his mouth and he wipes out his enemies. But then you'll notice that his name is called the word of God. That's what it says. So you notice that this is all tied right here to the Bible. Keep reading. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So his overall appearance is like the sun brightly shining. If you compare that with the last chapter of the book of Malachi. Let's turn over there. Let's go to Malachi chapter 4. So notice what you're reading here at Revelation 1, 13 through 16 is not some black Jesus coming out. It is talking about him coming down at Armageddon. That's the Jesus you're looking at. If you want to look at a black Jesus, you're disgracing his holy side right here that he's trying to teach you. His holy side right here is... Armageddon, where he gets back what rightfully belongs to his, where he casts judgment upon sin and establishes holiness. 
Look at the book of Malachi chapter 4. <clears throat> now let's look at the first verse of Malachi 4. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Hmm, remember Jesus' feet burn like fine brass? Hmm, like a furnace. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name. So this is when God comes down and judges his enemies. Armageddon, right? Look at verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the... What? S-U-N. Son of righteousness. Arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked. See that? He's stomping the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. See, that's Armageddon Jesus. So then, Revelation 1, 13 through 15, I believe, the passage over there talks about the Armageddon Jesus, the real Jesus that is scary, frightful, and holy in his majesty. And that will fool any liberal and cultist out there that this cannot be Jesus. This cannot be Jesus. Nope. They have not read Revelation 1, 13 through uh, 16. They did not read that. That's your real Jesus right there. All right, let's look at verse 17. And when I saw him, so when John sees Jesus, I fell at his feet as dead. No kidding. Because this Jesus has a dreadful countenance. I don't believe in scaring people about God and Jesus. Wait till God comes down. Just by looking at him would scare the socks out of you and you fall down as if you were dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. So Jesus puts his right hand on John, saying unto me, fear not. Amen. So that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, what he will do is that that's where he calms the storm in your life. You'll notice that every time God manifests himself to people, people get scared. Because that's how majestic and awesome and holy God's presence is. Amen. But then you'll notice in the middle of that where God is so awesome, so many millennia and eons above you, that he would take his right hand and pat you on the head and say, fear not. Man, ain't that, man, what a mighty God we serve, right? Fear not. That is our God, man. And that's why we shouldn't be scared of him. But if you're against this being, you have every right to be scared. And that's why when the world attacks you and attacks Jesus Christ, you shouldn't be scared. Because you got some, someone more scary behind your back. 